John Harbaugh, Ravens head coach, he said that they started studying film on the Texans right after they beat the Browns the other night. So you know what? I'm going to try to follow in his footsteps. And in today's video, we are going to try to look at some possible ways that the Baltimore Ravens can exploit the Houston Texans. Some different ways that they can pick them apart. Some huge advantages that go in the Baltimore Ravens' favor. But I couldn't do that alone. I, I couldn't do it alone. So I had to bring on a very special a very knowledgeable and a very reputable guest to help me figure this thing out. Team Keep It Clean, very, very special guest in the building. It is my guy, KO, Kevin Ostrichter from Locked On Ravens. Before we get into it, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I appreciate um, just everything that you do for Locked On Ravens. Um, shout out to you. You always put out banger tweets literally every single day. Every every single tweet you put out got like 50,000 likes and 3 million views and whatnot. You'd be having the Ravens fans going crazy, which we love and we appreciate. Uh, so I appreciate your time uh, coming through on the channel, K.O. Uh, you know, you know, the respect is mutual in Graven. I, uh, you know, it's been a while we've been collaborating on these things now. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, every single time we do, it's it's and, but now we're talking about a good thing. Ravens in the playoffs <laughs> and, you know, got their divisional opponent. But, you know, it's it's been a long time since we started this. And I, I'm really grateful for how, you know, we've done things and how our relationship has grown, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and I want your relationship with Team Keep It Clean to grow even more. So everybody make sure you subscribe uh, to his YouTube channel, Locked On Ravens. The link will be down below in the description. And I know a lot of y'all subscribed already, but we need even more of y'all to subscribe and leave a like on all of, all of his videos as well. Man, show that love and support that I know uh, y'all are great at doing. Now, um, somebody who we got, we got love for. We ain't going to have love for them this weekend is CJ Stroud and, and the Houston. Texans. Um, it, it is official that the Baltimore Ravens will be going against them on Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Just give us a brief overview of how you're feeling about this game. I'm, I'm feeling good about it. And a couple of reasons why. I think, you know, if, if you want to start off with the actual stats, you want to run some numbers quickly here. The Texans in the regular season, they had the eighth best passing offense, but they were one of the worst rushing offenses in the league at, at 29. And then you look at their defense, passing-wise, they were towards the bottom of the league, 27th, but they had the second-best rushing defense. Now, Ooh. for me, this is a different Texans team than we saw in week one, but mm -hmm. it's also a different Ravens team. I think both teams have grown, and, and it's for the better. I think we're going to see a matchup here where C.J. Stroud, I mean, we talked all about how top two defenses in this league was probably Ravens one and Browns two. And C.J. Mm -hmm. Stroud made that Browns defense look like they were the worst defense in the entire NFL on yeah. wild card weekend. I mean, mm -hmm. credit to the offensive line for them, Laramie Tunsil and all those guys. But one area I'm looking at right now in Graven mm -hmm. is the receivers for Houston. They've lost a couple of guys over the course of the final part of the season here. Tank Dell, right. electric right. rookie, right. South Florida guy. He's somebody that is now done. He was done about what week 14, week 15, can't remember exactly when, but he's not coming back. They also just placed Noah Brown mm -hmm. on injured reserve. So that's about 1,200 to 1,300 yards that's now gone for Houston. So the main guy you got to focus on is Nico Collins. That's the yeah. big guy. And it's funny, so it's Ohio State quarterback to Michigan wide receiver and CJ Stroud and Nico Collins. So it's funny rivalry between those two, although they're teammates now. But mm -hmm. other than that, I mean, it's, it's John Mechie and, uh, Robert Woods, Steven Sims, I guess Dalton Schultz, if you want to throw in all the pass catchers. For me, and you look at the Ravens' secondary, Ravens are really deep. I mean, Marlon Humphrey hopefully coming back. We know what Brandon Stevens has done this season. Right. Arthur Millette has been awesome in the slot for them. Ronald Darby has been, I think, one of the yeah. better corners in the league this year in limited action. Mm -hmm. So to me, I just it's almost like Tyree Kill in Miami because Jalen Wild didn't play in Week 17. Mm -hmm. You know Tyree can beat you. Mm -hmm. Put all the attention there and make somebody else beat you. Like, make someone else make the play. For me, it's the same thing with Nico Collins. Defensively, I look in the trenches for the Texans with their defense. John Grenard is awesome. 12 and a half sacks this season. Will Anderson was a beast in that Cleveland game. I mean, he, he was all over the place. Derek Barnett. But to the Ravens' credit, their offensive line, I mean, I know there were questions about Ronnie Stanley and Morgan Moses and those guys mm -hmm. in the middle of the year. But I think the tackle rotation has really worked for them. I mean, there's a question, are they going to keep doing it? For me, I mean, if it's 
not broken, you don't have to fix anything. I mean, I, I would just keep doing, keep doing it and it's worked. But mm-hmm. I think if you talk about who did the buy benefit the most, Ronnie Stanley, I think is definitely, I think that at the, at the top of that list, as opposed to other guys to Hamilton and players like that. But I think for me, I don't want to say the Texans are inexperienced, but you look at the rest of the AFC playoff teams, they're the most inexperienced team left in the AFC because mm-hmm. you have the Bills, you have the Chiefs, and you have the Ravens. And this is kind of a weird comparison, and it's not exactly on point, but I see a lot of the 2019 Ravens, and it's different circumstances. But I think the 2023 Ravens are a more mature version of what 2019 was. That 2019 right. team was young. They were historic. They were great. But mm-hmm. I think this 2023 team, you know, they've gone through the failures. They've adjusted. For Houston, the thing for me is they have nothing to lose at this point, right? They're right. playing with house money because what if they lose to the Ravens in a divisional round? It's mm-hmm. they had a great season, went far mm-hmm. than anybody thought they were going to go. Mm-hmm. Great year. If the Ravens lose this game, mm-hmm. the world's on fire. Everything's mm-hmm. falling down because they were the best team in the regular season. So I think they match up well against Houston. I think, honestly, out of all these teams, I would have only taken Pittsburgh over Houston. So I think it'll work out for them. Oh, yeah, that's some good points. You made a really good point that I think is a uh, very, very big advantage uh, for the Baltimore Ravens going into this game because you talked about Texans rush offense because you said it's, it's, it hasn't been hasn't been that good, right? No, 29th in the league this year. Ooh, ooh. so that I think that that makes life easier uh, for the Baltimore Ravens because their pass defense um, overall has been really good. The Baltimore Ravens, if they can make this a, a one dimensional game, for the Houston Texans, obviously easier said than done. You got to get out, get out there on the field and prove it. But if you can make this a one-dimensional game for the Texans, that can make life a lot easier for you. And, and something else that you mentioned, you talked about their past defense. They were ranked low as well throughout the Yeah, 27, 27. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, those, those are things that could really play uh, into the Ravens' favor. And I think a, a big thing with this game, obviously uh, those passing yards through the air, but also the yak. Uh, the yards after the contact and yards after the catch that could be big for those Baltimore Ravens uh, just to get those nice chunk plays as well. And especially too, because this, you, and you mentioned it too, how this is a, a much different team. Both teams are much different than they were uh, previously earlier this year. Cause that was literally the, the very first game of the season. Uh, both teams were brand new. Uh, they were fresh. This was a new system for CJ Stroud. It was a new system for Lamar Jackson and both quarterbacks have grown a lot. Uh, throughout the year made uh, leaps and bounds. Um, but this Ravens team, what was he, we won 26 to nine, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, completely different teams though, completely different teams. Uh, and while both teams have certainly grown, uh, both teams got their issues as well, but the Ravens, uh, their offense has just been rolling. Uh, when, when Lamar plays, obviously not in that Steelers game because he didn't play, but when Lamar plays, their offense has been rolling uh, and the defense, they've been doing their thing as well um what advantages uh again we just talked about them having a bad run uh run defense excuse me run offense uh and a bad pass defense but what other advantages do you see uh the ravens being able to possibly take advantage of well i think just physicality too i think these are mm. actually two physical teams but something i've identified and i know you've talked about it i've talked about it is how this defense they made the personnel changes. I think physicality and depth are the two things, aside from the stars, obviously you have guys like Roquan and Kyle Hamilton, mm-hmm. but the Ravens impose their will. And part of this is I think the Ravens are so locked in right now. I'm not sure anything could take them out of this mode they're in. <laughs> we talk about rest versus rust and then the bye week yeah. and everything. Again, mm-hmm. this is this is a more mature Ravens team. They have been through that. And I just think the motivation factor where, again, the Ravens have everything to lose in this game. The Texans do not. Not saying the Texans aren't going to play hard and try to win the game, but they understand what's at stake here. And part of this is who knows what happens when this season is over. Mike McDonald's getting coach interviews left and right. Are they going to be able to retain Justin Matabike and Patrick Queen? Mm. I think the locker room just likes each other so much. And again, you don't have to like everybody at your workplace, right? I mean, maybe there's a little crazy relationship here or there. But John Harbaugh has these guys going. And Mm -hmm. when you talk about the experience John Harbaugh does have in playoff moments, again, has the track record been great recently? No, I think think we we can all admit that. But he's won a Super Bowl. And part of it, too, is another advantage is you mentioned the receivers for Baltimore going up against that Houston pass defense I alluded to. 
Mm-hmm. Zay Flowers hopefully coming back healthy in this game. Odell mm-hmm. with rest. Rashad Bateman, Isaiah likely. Is, is Mark Andrews going to make a return? <laughs> Who knows at this point? But to me, I think that you can exploit that part of it because there, there are some players on that defense from a secondary perspective. Derek Stingley is awesome. I'm a big Derek mm-hmm. Stingley fan. You know, Jalen Petrie from Baylor, he's kind of a do-it-all safety. But I just think Zay Flowers one-on-one, one thing I noticed in that Houston game, you mentioned it in Graven, 20, 25 to nine was the score. One thing, David Ajabo had a sack. I think everybody was so excited about that. Mm. Is what he was going to do. But Lamar threw the ball 22 times in this game, completed 17 of them. Zay Flowers had 10 targets. No other Raven had th- more than three. A couple of them had three. What we've seen this Ravens offense evolve to is Lamar Jackson establishing connections with multiple, mm. multiple, multiple receivers. Absolutely. So we we know Zay can do his thing. We know he can get his. But Isaiah Likely stepping up and Odell and Lamar connecting. Rashad Bateman makes a play here or there. He mm-hmm. can check it down out of the backfield. I think that there's just so many multiple looks this Ravens offense can give where I think we're past the days of it only being Zay and double-digit targets and nothing else. Plus, you have a guy like Dalvin Cook now who I would assume plays in this game. He can work off of Gus Edwards, work off of Justice Hill. I'm not sure we mm-hmm. see Melvin Gordon after uh, after the fumble he had in, in week mm-hmm. 18 against Pittsburgh. But to me, I just think if you can establish an early lead, get out to that and, and make the Texans offense one-dimensional because you're out to that early, make him abandon the run game early, mm-hmm. it works for your offense and it works for your defense. And the thing this Ravens offense does, in tw- Greg Roman era, that offense would hold the ball for – eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes. It'd be ball control offense. Mm -hmm. Todd Munkin's offense, they don't care about that. They'll go 75 yards and five plays in two minutes and 35 seconds and score that (laughs) ball. Efficiency has been the name of the game for Todd Munkin. I think how efficient this Ravens offense has been all season. If you want to talk about efficiency defensively, third down defense and red zone defense have been the Ravens two calling cards this season. Mm. I don't expect that to change here in the divisional round. And I like what you talked about uh, efficiency and just the different ways to get it and just really the overall evolution uh, of this Todd Monk and offense early on in the season, something that you brought up uh, in reference to Zay Flowers and his targets um, early on the season, like the, he would get a crazy amount of touches. And it was like, there's nothing wrong with it because it's Zay Flowers. You want the ball in his hands. You want, cause you can, you can tell you can make some plays, uh, but while Zay Flowers still has been making his plays, yeah, Lamar and that Ravens offense, they've really been spreading his ball out uh, even more. And it's funny you mentioned Mark Andrews. He didn't play in the first Texans game. Uh, and it's still, as of right now, it's still up in the air to see if he ends up playing in this second one. Uh, Marlon Humphrey was somebody else who missed their first Texans game. Uh, Marcus Williams, he left in the middle of the Texans game. J.K. Dobbins, he, uh, yeah, that's the game that ended his season prematurely. Um, but yeah, these Ravens, they just much, much, much different and they have evolved a lot, especially on offense. And I really like the way that they can get it in so many different ways. They can score, like you mentioned, in, in so many different ways before it's so many different people. So while Zay Flowers, he may not get 10 targets all the time like he used to, but other guys are getting involved and that makes it harder for opposing defenses to, to just focus on one person and be like, all right. You know what, Zay Flowers, that's the number one guy. All right, we'll take him out of the game. No, you still got to worry about Bate. You still got to worry about Beckham, Aguilar, and likely everybody. You still have a lot that you have to take care of, uh, even if you decide you're going to take out one person. So this Ravens offense has just leaps and bounds uh, much better and much more evolved. And you've seen so much growth from week one uh, all the way up until now. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot, man. And let me know if you decide to accept this challenge or not. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big score prediction guy, but <laughs> would you like to give a score prediction for this Ravens and Texans matchup? I will I will accept your challenge. I okay. will accept it. Now I, I like this matchup a lot for the Ravens. I think they're gonna win this game. I think it'll be close. 
it's funny. Whenever I say it's going to be close, at least when I've done it this season, the Ravens have just blown their opponent out of the water. So hopefully I say it's hey. close now. And what happens? The Ravens go out there and blow out the Texans. But I, I do look at the way the defense has played all season. The Ravens have not mm-hmm. given me a reason to pick against them, right? That Their mm-hmm. defense has played great all season. Their offense has found their stride. I think C.J. Stroud does make a couple of plays. Oh, I yeah, think he's sure. he's playing at too high of a level right now not to. I, I actually like the Texans in their direction this year, but I just think that the Ravens are further along in the process, which means I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here and say mm-hmm. they're going to continue – I'll, I'll say something along the lines of 27 to 18, 27 to 17, so, something in that range. Not a complete mm-hmm. blowout, yeah. but I think the Ravens will probably have control for most of the game here. And again, just make Houston play from behind, right? See how it goes, eliminate their running game and, and play with that physicality. Ravens fans, I expect to show up loud at MT mm-hmm. Bank Stadium on Saturday. I think that be. plays a factor. And mm-hmm. Ravens are built for this, right? They're built for that physical, cold weather, smash mouth football, both offensively and defensively. And that, to me, is one of the many reasons I'm going to give them the win here. Oh, that's something that I didn't even think about because Texans, they have, I know they have a retractable roof, I believe, but a lot of times they close it. So the weather is not even a factor there. Uh, but in Baltimore, yeah, it should be cold and it's going to be one of those hard hitting, very physical games. I mean, for Ravens defense, that's usually how every game goes is hard hitting. And very physical. Um, so this should be a good one. And, and with it's a sort of special game, you know, I, yeah, it's a different regime, a different team, but I, I still like to make it a little more special than it might be for Jadavian Clowney because you know that's the Texans and they drafted him what number two overall that year. So um, I, I'm looking forward to Jadavian Clowney finishing some of the sacks that he missed in week one and making up for that because he did miss a couple of them. Uh, but yeah, I, I expect the Ravens to take care of business in this game as well. Uh, and Regardless of whatever the score is going to be, Ravens, like, again, you, you heard the man. He said it's going to be a close game, but whenever he says it's close, it don't end up being close. So, Ravens, you, if you want to blow them out, hey, no problem. If you end up making it a close game, okay, it'll be a problem. We'll have our little heart attacks throughout the game, but we're used to that as Ravens fans. But as long as they leaving out of there with a win, that's the only thing that matters. And, and these Baltimore Ravens, they just – Everything is right there in front of them. This is exactly uh, what they played for and what they earned throughout this season. Uh, They won enough games and put themselves in a position to where they did have this bye week to where all these teams are battling, going back and forth and whatnot, and the Ravens just chilling. They're sitting back watching, watching everybody beat themselves up, beat up each other uh, while they wait for for it to be determined whoever their next opponent was going to be. And it did took a a little extra time than than originally anticipated, but we finally got to know who they're opponent ended up being so i'm looking forward to this game ko i appreciate you as always coming through uh before we get out of here let everybody know where they can find you and let everybody know what what you got going on over there on lockdown ravens i always appreciate you engraving you can find me over at locked on ravens we're a five day a week ravens podcast over there so we are on youtube if you want to subscribe to the channel if you like to listen to your podcast in audio form anywhere you get your shows you can do that as well it's the same show you're not missing out on any content there as well i also working with the ryan ripkin show now that's a two time a week or over oh. on youtube which we're we're doing over there so locked on ravens ryan ripkin show you can find my writing over on ravens wire you can find me over on twitter at chaos striker 34 we put out content over there on social media all the time so very raven centric very baltimore centric here and uh hopefully looking forward to a long playoff run here you know we, we talk all the time about how oh, after a, a close ravens win they got to go find and, and figure out how to how to you know make this thing better make that thing better it doesn't matter anymore just win the game it's the playoffs mm-hmm. got to go do that so appreciate you as always in great straight up man just like that so y'all make sure y'all check out my guy ko from locked on ravens and i think he just did an interview recently with, with with zay flowers and dalvin cook's agent so y'all check that out on his channel appreciate you Uh, The links to everything will be down below in the description of Team Keep It Clean. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a like on the video because y'all know it helps out a whole, whole lot. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And we out.